Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. We've all heard of the Raspberry Pi, but there are other single board computers out there. Sasha, you ready to take, take a look? I certainly am. All right, so tonight we're going to unbox the Pine 64 LTS. Now, I've got kind of the kit here. I've got my trusty ruler so that we can measure everything. All right, let's get right into it. This is, uh, now LTS in this case for the Pine uh, A64 LTS stands for long-term supply. That means that they're gonna support this thing and continue manufacturing it until uh, at least 2020. Where do I start? Okay, first of all, let's get right into the box of the Pine 64 LTS. There it is. The first thing that is immediately striking about this board is that it is significantly uh, larger form factor than, uh, than the Raspberry Pi that we're used to. Let's get in here. There it is. So this is the Pine A64 LTS, and uh, it has an all-winner R18, quad-core, ARM Cortex, uh, the uh, A53, that's a 64-bit processor, and that allows it to have uh, two gigabytes of uh, LPDDR3 RAM. Um, so it's got a, about, tw well, twice as much memory as a Raspberry Pi. Um, so presumably we're able to do quite a bit more as well. Um, it has a built-in SPI boot flash. It's 128 megs. Um, and it's also got some really great capabilities here that we don't see on some of the smaller SBCs. First of all, uh, I'm going to flip this over. Now we do have uh, what looks like the SD card reader here. And uh, that's about it on this side. Over here we have, I hope you can see that, all right, that's an EMMC input for uh, a module of up to 128 gigabytes. So that is essentially, so if you're used to uh, single board computers where you've got an SD card, we know that SD cards are not overly reliable and they do eventually um, basically fry themselves and you lose the, the data that's on them. And that's part of SBCs. We know that uh, SD cars, cards are not that reliable. So we tend to have a backup and be able to replace them on the fly. Now EMMC on the other hand, it's a solid state hard drive and it's quite a bit more reliable and significantly faster. Um, so this has that capability unlike the Raspberry Pi but similar to uh, the Odroid XU4 for example. Uh, you can boot from either or. So you can boot from either the EMMC or the SD card which is beautiful. You can put the OS on there and uh, you can choose which one you want to use. Now if you are a maker you're going to notice that it does have GPIO, so it's got the Pi 2 GPIO bus, uh, Euler GPIO bus, and it's got connections for other peripherals as well. Uh, lots of interfaces like UART, uh, SPI, I2C. Uh, so if you're a maker that you want to, you know, you want to integrate some sensors into this board uh, or other peripheral devices, you can do that. So it's a perfect maker board it's going to get you up and going real good. Um, so this one comes with a one-year warranty. Looks great. Now, I don't see a USB input for power. Do you notice that? But what I do see is a barrel connector. So I as assume that uh, this guy over here is going to be what we're looking for. So it is a 5-volt board, um, and this should be, let's see, we've got a 5-volt 3-amp. So 5 volt, 3 amps, and it has the, uh, the barrel connector. This is a, a 3.5 OD uh, over 1.35 ID barrel type or one or the other. There you go. So just like that. So it's a barrel connector anyways, not a s standard USB micro or anything like that. So you will need a separate power supply uh, for this particular SBC. And you notice, again, it's quite a bit larger than uh, a traditional SBC, which might be about half the size, um, but we've got a case for it. So let's take a look at that. First of all, I say it's larger. Let's give the measurements here. So we've got three inches. You can see that okay, Sash? I can. Perfect. Three point, three inches and two, maybe three millimeters. And this way we've got five inches right on the money. So there you have it. Let's see what we've got here. Ooh, they look like AAA batteries. Huh. Ah. 
These look like uh, like a type of riser. Oh, I'm excited about that. That looks nice. Okay. Let's get a look at what they've got here. So we've got some PVC. Oh, and it's got the Pine A64 logo there. Nice and simple. Now, it is. it looks like it's quite open concept. There you go. So that's going to screw. So we've got a couple of screws here. I'm not going to actually assemble this, but you can use your imagining. And you see that these four screws will hold this onto the riser plate. And then the risers that we have here that look like AAA batteries, and they're about the same size as a AAA battery, they're going to give us a, a rise on that board as well, about this high. So you're going to have a lot of airflow, uh, but a lot of potential dust getting in there as well. So keep that in mind. You're going to want to keep that clean. That looks good. Okay. Now, other peripherals that you might need for your Pine A64 LTS. First of all, if you want to have Wi-Fi, it does support it, but you're going to have to get a separate module. And that looks a little something, something like this. There we go. And I guess that just snaps right on here somewhere. Let's see. There we go. And then just like that, it has Wi-Fi? Well, that, that is Wi-Fi now. And then I guess this is just the antenna, so we can stick that on there. And then, yes, you've got a Wi-Fi controller built in. Next up, I've got a 16 gigabyte. Uh, I mentioned um, the eMMC capabilities of this board. I love eMMC in comparison to, say, SD cards. More reliable, significantly faster. And that's all there is to it. So it looks roughly the size of a, a small SD card, but it's going to just simply snap onto the board just like so. So you just place it on top, find the spot, and snap it on. And now that is a, a 16 gigabyte hard drive on that main board. Perfect. We've got a heat sink for the CPU. And just in case I want to flash my own OS on there, let's say I want to put NEMS Linux on it, or I want to put uh, a different distro of Linux or Android or Windows or whatever I want to put on there, they've included um, this extra peripheral, which you're probably going to have to buy separately. Now, we've uh, been sent this by Pine64 uh, Pine to, uh, to review. Uh, but this is a eMMC... USB adapter. So now I can just simply plug this into the adapter and plug that into my computer and be able to flash any OS onto that that's compatible with this board. So speaking of compatible um, OSs, now this carries the A64 markings and it is the A64 uh, LTS. So you might presume that an A64 uh, plus uh, OS will run on this, and that is not the case. This will run any of the uh, Sopine platform uh, OSs, and that is due to the uh, to the RAM configuration of this particular board. So that means that the A64 Plus distributions of Linux or whatever it is that you want to install will not run on this board, even though it carries the A64 um, marking. Okay, so you need the Sopine versions of those OSs. So that's uh, any of the builds that are available on the Sopine uh, platform. So there you have it. I can't wait to fire that up. I love unboxings. They're absolutely my favorite, favorite episodes. I love the single board computers and how there are other brands that are really on the rise. The A64 LTS is something that I'm really excited about. 